title called I Almost Ruined My Marriage. Pastor Eno, thank you for being on our set today. I'm excited to be here, actually. I'm excited yes, to I'm have excited. you here. <laughs> when I saw your book, all I needed was like the title. I, I saw the title of it, I was like, eh? Okay. First is first, a Nigerian. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Wrote this kind of book. Mm -hmm. And then you added My, my True, True Life, Life Story. Mm -hmm. Tell us about this book. Tell us about, give us the backstory into this book. This book actually came from um, the place of prayer. I actually, before now, I've written about three, four books. I haven't published any yet. Interesting. Yes, so I've just been writing, but I haven't. So you're a writer. So well, we yes, all writers. Yes, you've you been know, expressing, expressing yes. you know. And there was an, an afternoon I was praying, and I asked God, I wanted to write something that he would want me to write, and he should tell me what to write, and I want something that would be easy to write. Hmm. So that evening, surprisingly, my husband came back that day, and he said... That God just dropped it in his hand that I should write a book um, about my marriage, about my own experience, you know, in marriage, you know, so, and I just, you know, I was just like, okay, I actually, you know, just pray pray, the prayer, a prayer and, and yeah. this, you know, because we didn't have that conversation. Yeah. So I went back and that was how the, the, the title came because it's actually my true life story. Everything I said in the book is what I did. And you said very deep things yes. and you revealed very yes. raw things that we don't like to talk about, about yes. in this part of the world. Yes, and that was um, one of the challenges you know, initially because if in this part of the world, we don't, we don't like telling our stories yes. because... Not because maybe people will want to tell their stories, but because maybe of, because um, of how you think people, people will then, perceive, exactly. yeah, you know, they'll perceive you yes. and what they will say or what they won't say. But because I knew it was God that was telling me to write the book, I wasn't really interested in what people would say or what mm. they wouldn't say. Mm. And also considering that a lot of marriages are going through, you know, when you sit on the counseling table and you hear what's going on in a home, totally. you know, you just know that, see, you know, and when you're trying to explain to them and tell them, oh, no, you can't do this this way, you know, they'll be like, you know, you don't, you don't understand. understand. <laughs> you don't understand. So, yeah. and at that point, I can't start telling them, okay, no, but you know, I have been there, yeah. I've done. So, as but this book is now like, okay, this, I have done these yes. things. And, and, you know, being a pastor's wife, you it's know, even, so it's even, you know, so you're there, everybody sees you like one and perfect, you think you're perfect, 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 you're such a saint. Um, you know, so that, that, all of that, you know, was all I had to think about. But sincerely, I, I wasn't bothered because I knew God said I should write the book. Mm. And the day I finished writing this book, surprisingly, that morning I was praying and God told me that I must finish this book that day. That is an urgency in the spirit for this book to go out. Mm. And he started telling me a couple of things that will happen after I finish writing this book, what he was going to do mm -hmm. through this book. And sincerely, all, those things, all happened. those things have happened in such a short period of time. Yes, Fantastic. So let's go into the content of the book. So the book is obviously about the fact that you had a bad attitude going into marriage. Yes. You had anger issues, mm -hmm. respect issues, mm -hmm. unforgiveness issues, mm -hmm. and all those things, and how bitterness. you express that bitterness. Mm. And as women already, we have a mouth issues, issues. <laughs> <laughs> depending on how you use it matters yes for those that haven't read the book give us a background into why you said you almost ruined your marriage before we then go into the concepts of the book okay um because you know when you get married and i got married at a young age yes so you said you met your husband at the age of 19. yes i was 19 when i met him we went out for five years before okay. we got married you know so and the the, the home i came from had a role to play with yeah. the way, you know, I, you I was, became, yeah. I became, you know. So I grew up in a, in a home where, you know, you, you see your parents fight, you know, so. And I did, I never knew that, you know, like my mom, maybe you say was hot tempered or anything. It's after I wrote the book and I was telling her what I wrote because they saw it on Facebook. Did your parents oh, they saw it on Facebook <laughs> and they're like, what did she do? Mm -hmm. You know, that kind of so. <laughs> So my mom now, you know, calls me on the phone. Even my dad called me. My mom calls me on the phone and I start telling her that, you know, what, what's the content, the content of, of the, the book. book. And she said, well, it's really true. If it is going to help another family, actually, when, you know, those days I used to be very... Um, hot tempered, mm. you know, and I never knew my mom was hot, hot tempered. tempered, you know, as children We just saw them fight. I just thought that was, that was just how you know it was yeah. That's how it was supposed to, to be. be so I grew up, you know with that You know that that's how things are, you know are done that it's only when you start fighting physically that That's when things, uh, you know, and that's when things have gone too far But 
you can shout, you can get angry, you can, you know, raise your voice. So it was a normal thing for me. So my surprise was when I got married and it all became an issue. And I'm like, I've been like this all these years. Everybody, has, everybody loves me the way I am. So why is it now a problem? You know, so that was, that, that was me. You know, the me, that was what formed the book. Mm. So basically, it's just me sharing my experiences. And you know, another thing was that I loved going for uh, marriage classes, relationship classes, you know. It, you know, I stayed praying. I said in the book, I stayed praying when I was 16. Yes, so, to, to, get to get married. To, yes. So I stayed praying quite early. So I would go for every marriage class, every, you know, all the seminars they do in universities. So technically, you were preparing so yourself I was preparing for because, this marriage. And why I was preparing was because of where I was coming from. So I didn't want to make the same mistake. So you, you knew... so. At the same time, while what you had seen mm -hmm. modeled before you was fighting, a part of you also knew that this was not necessarily right. Yes, I knew it wasn't right. Mm. You know, I knew it wasn't right because when we were growing up, we would be crying when we when we saw when our parents. Them, when yeah, you saw them so, fighting. Yeah, so we will cry, you know, and like, oh, daddy, stop, you know, leave mommy, you know, all of that. So I knew it wasn't right. So I always would tell God, please, I want a peaceful man. I want a peaceful home. So I will always go for the classes. But the problem was that in, in such classes, they don't tell you, they just tell you, um, you know, uh, five things to look out for in a man. You know, all those prescriptions, they give you prescriptions. I like that, prescriptions, prescriptions. like it's a drug. Like, yeah, you know, take, take it, you know, yeah. and not telling you the real thing. Mm. So I, I never heard the things I put down in my book. I never heard them. If I heard them, I'm sure it would have helped me. And one of the things I liked that you said was because I'd always been this way. So people say, oh, you talk a lot, be a lawyer. Mm -hmm. Society was also enabling things that seem to be quote unquote, a bad attitude. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, that's just how you are. Mm -hmm. And then we also get into the point where we say, but that's how I am. Mm -hmm. That's how mm -hmm. I talk. Yes, yes, That's who yes. I am. Yes, yes, you know, and that's um, the place of, you know, validating your weaknesses. Exactly, that's the word, so, validation. So you're, you have a weakness and society is validating it. That so, society is validating your weakness doesn't mean... That your weakness is right. Is right. So I, I said it that I had two people offer me um, to, uh, to sponsor me, actually, in... <laughs> Uh, in, school, in school to to study law one was before marriage the other one was while i was married so imagine i mean in marriage and my husband is complaining and someone and is someone telling is me saying, go, go and go. study law i'm you going to pay well. you can't you know because i could argue so when i argue you can't win me in an argument <laughs> and it's not because i'm arguing with facts but just because i won't give up <laughs> so you will get tired so it might even be wrong but you're arguing oh, yes. that's wrong oh, yes and you will get tired so you will now you back out and I'm like, okay, I've won. So it was always about winning, hmm. you know. So that also, you know, it, it really played. And you imagine, you you know, when you're married to a man, yeah. if you do such things, a man wants to, at times, they, at times they just want to say something and whatever and they yes. say, you just, you just take it. Yes. Everything, even whether you like it or not. not, you know. So, but there's nothing you say that I'm going to take because you I have an opinion. Too. I always had an opinion, so it was a problem. So we need to go on a break now, but when we come back, I'll always go into this specific concept, because you said many interesting things in this book that I think that a lot of people need to unlearn certain things yes. and learn, because a lot of us are the products of our past, yes. and you don't realize how it's affecting the present yes. and how it would even affect the future. future. But we'll go on a short break now. This is a very interesting conversation. Trust me, you don't want to miss it. We'll go on a short break now, and we will be right back. You are welcome back to Chapters and today we are talking about attitude in our marriages and the effect that our attitude can have on the state and the success of our marriages. And with me is Pastor Eno Jerry, the author of the book, I Almost Ruined My Marriage. Well, let's go deep into the book, like I said, and the, one of the first things you said was the fact that you had anger issues, which you then took into your marriage. How did that affect the relationship between you and your husband? How are you manifesting your anger issues in your marriage? Okay, um, I did different things. And I'm going <laughs> examples, you know. Um, because I, used, I usually will be very angry, so at times I would... Um, you know, the, the problem is that when you're angry, you don't even know what you do. You forget. People that are it's angry forget that, yes. easily. It's the it's people those that you did it, did it to that will remember the things you yeah, did. So there are a lot of things that I did that I can't remember. But 
but you know, like when I discuss my husband, my husband will tell me, and I'm like, no, like, who does do that? that? Yeah, I'll even tell him who does that. I can't, you know, <laughs> because <laughs> now I know I can't do that again. Mm. But I can remember when we got married, the first week we got married, um, uh, then he was working with he United so. Nations. Yeah. And um, he went to Abuja. He said, let's go to Abuja together. So I went with him. And for some reason, you know, he, he left, he went to work. Mm -hmm. I really don't even know what my problem was that day. <laughs> you know, maybe because he left me in the hotel and didn't probably maybe plan on how I'm going to eat or I don't, I, I really don't really I, remember, I, I can't remember what, it, what was. it was that was upsetting me, but I know it was just because he left me and he didn't call, maybe he didn't check he up, didn't on check up the throughout the whole day. So, you know, as an angry person that I was, I was already boiling mm. and I was just waiting for him to come back. So when he came back, the look on my face alone would have already told him that there's already a problem. And I started nagging, I started to complain. There was nothing he could tell me that could you know, pacify me. I just kept complaining and complaining. And at some point, he just went and sat at the corner, you know, like in the hotel where the bed is and the phone, he just went there, sat there and started crying. And it was when he started crying that I just, I just discovered, okay, maybe I've taken you too far. I'm like, mm. oh, and I said, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And this was because the first week. This was just our first yes. week in marriage, you know. Um, things like, you know, like this one, he, he told me, I, you know, that you I did remember. it. I can't remember I did it. He said he could be one of those days. Still the first, you know, that first um, week, mm -hmm. you know, first week of our marriage. And I was so upset, you know, and I broke the plates in the kitchen. Wow. You know, I got so angry, I just entered the kitchen and, you know, from shattered and shattered plates. plates. Sincerely, I can't believe I could do that kind of thing, but I did it actually, you know. Oh, you know, things like that, you know. I, I, I usually would get angry, I would bang the door at him. So he'll be talking to me and, and you said you would walk out. I walk he's out talking. Yeah, when he's talking to me, I'll just I'm like, I can't take this anymore, you know, it's 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 getting so I'll just ignore him, walk out, and I'll make sure I bang the door. So these are the kind of things I did. And I don't think any man, there's no man that will want to feel that way mm. because it also communicates disrespect. Yes, which was a chapter you wrote in the book as well. Yes, so I talked about disrespect, things I did, you know, to show that, you know, I would, I would, okay, you were talking about anger, now we have moved to disrespect, disrespect. you know, so maybe I will use, there's this thing that they say, I don't know how to explain it, but I try to explain in the book, you know, when you use your nose and you push it up, you know, when someone's talking to <laughs> in you. Your it's called Yimu. Okay, yeah, it's okay, Yimu. okay, yeah. so you just use Use your nose to, you know, do like this, you know. So he's talking, and I'm like doing all of that to in him. front of him. In front of him, oh, right, in front of him. So he you sees it. <laughs> yes, yes. So you know, he sees it, and he complains, and I'm like, oh, I will give an excuse for why I did whatever, you know, hmm. did that, and my and disrespecting him, I didn't, I, I didn't just do it you know, in secret. I did I disrespected him in the public. You know, I could talk to him anyhow in front of people. And I, I my husband had always been a pastor. Not like he I I had I knew him, as, him I as met him pastor. as a pastor. So you can imagine, you know, that kind of it was even people, you know, that I knew, maybe like older women that would tell me no, you know, you don't you talk, don't like, talk like this in front of people, people, you know, and all of that. And yet, you know, at times I couldn't even understand what they're saying and I'll be making excuses for why I'm doing what I'm doing, you know. So this this really this this really it deeply into our marriage and it really affected us. I'm sure family. that it, in fact, one of the things that you wrote here, you said separation between spouses isn't only hinged on immorality. Mm -hmm. The seemingly little acts of anger, unkindness, wickedness, disrespect, dishonesty, lies, deception, envy, jealousy, etc., which couples express towards each other are very strong weapons the enemy uses to break the home. Yes. And so those things, sometimes people think it's just adultery, but mm. it's just these little things of disrespect here, you speak somehow there, and especially when you feel you have a right, because sometimes yes. it's because some person has done something. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so in reacting or in responding to that, you mm. really feel as if you're standing on your right. And yes. so you can't tell me, any mm -hmm. rubbish, you can't mm -hmm. tell me any wrong, and mm -hmm. you continue to do these things. Mm -hmm. But for you, how did that then lead to, you talked about bitterness in the book. Did mm -hmm. you bring bitterness into the marriage? Or was it his actions that then led to, and all of this that then led to you then becoming bitter? What I tell people is that bitterness is, is, is the elder brother of anger. Mm -hmm. So when you, if you're an angry person, if you don't deal with your anger and you allow it linger, it turns to bitterness. That's just what bitterness is. Anger that has not been I dealt, with. dealt with. So I had I have I, I I was that person, but I didn't know that I was that kind of person until I got married. So you know it's like when people 
offend me or make me upset and I don't maybe like tell them you and I just you yes you know I cook it heart. in my heart and it's yeah. there so it just keeps growing mm -hmm. you know without me knowing then I just ha I'm just bitter you know about you know I just become bitter mm -hmm. and it was my husband that started telling me that see you you're actually you're a bitter person you know you're <laughs> a bitter you, you know no. and I'm like no no, no how can I you know <laughs> I, you know you, you know because in all of this you were born again I was born again you were oh, born again spirit tongue -talking, tongue talking Christian oh I was even in university days I was in intercessory squad so we used to go to the village outreaches mm -hmm. go and do uh, evangelism. evangelism, do dry fast and prayer all night. And you still had this so kind I of had deep, all yeah. this, you know, with me, you know. When did your eyes begin to open? Oh, when my eyes began to open. Wait, how long before I said? How long did you then do this for in marriage? For like how many years or months okay. or weeks? You know, this, this actually like this book. You know, I've been married for over ten, 10 years. years. So the this my change just started not too long ago. Wow. Yes, it just started, let's say, in seven, the seventh year. That's Hallelujah. really, so you can imagine how long, you know, because I see people that will even tell me, oh, I've tried three years, four years, it's not working, I don't think it could work. At times, you know, it, 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 it takes even longer because the only time change can come is even when the person realizes that the person has a problem. Exactly. So it depends on how long it exactly. will take you to take realize you. Exactly. You know, that you have a problem. Yeah. So for me, when that's when it happened was when I just figured out and saw how I was ruining because actually it's ruin. The word ruin, mm -hmm. I, it's it's it, yes it's catchy but that was what, that was, what was, happening. was happening. You know when I discovered what my actions, you know, or inactions was doing to my marriage. Yeah. So I just figured out, you know, like the Bible will say, a wise woman builds her home, a foolish woman tears, tears it, it down. down. You know, and I, and I actually said in my book that, you know, the foolish woman, you don't need anybody to help you. You can do it all by, all by yourself. yourself. You can actually tear down your home by yourself. Because the things I did, I didn't have the influence of, you say, like a friend or a, a type. This, was this is just who, who I am, yes. you know, and that was what, who, who I am was yes who i was you know and its impact so i just discovered that you know at some point my husband stopped talking he said so he became distant he became distant he would laugh with other people more he wouldn't laugh with me you know and you're thinking okay your husband should laugh with you the person is not even looking at you you can come into a place he wouldn't even notice that you are there mm. you know unlike before maybe when you enter a place so, you know when you know how the person treated you exactly. before so the person treats you like a it's queen as soon as now. you come you know he wants to announce that my wife is yeah. here he wants to take you everywhere you know he's just excited then you know there's this light in the eye yeah. you see then all of a sudden there's no there's Light. No light. <laughs> <laughs> you know that trouble has come. Trouble, you know. So the person doesn't just, you know, just you just you know that someone doesn't really care, you know. And you know because he wasn't talking about it, so, as in talking in the sense he wasn't mm. telling anybody. So it's not as if he will report me to anybody. Yeah. But it's just something you know that in the house you just know that there's that distance. So there's really nothing to talk about. So you're just together, but you're not seeing anything. Also because maybe he started working on eggshells. But before I go and say this now, that was the problem because hmm. he, it would just come turn into monster war. That was the problem because he would say even to correct me, you know, if he it's says trouble. something, then it will become an issue. I will blow it out of proportion. So, you know, and that's the you know when I talked about assumption, it, 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 someone is trying to correct I you. I love that chapter. You know, someone. Is trying to tell you something oh see this thing is not right and i will start reading another meaning to, to what is being said so you know and you're just wondering okay so i study you that you have um you, you get angry easily you have to work on your anger then i would interpret it as him saying there's something wrong with there's you. something wrong with me <laughs> or he does not like me or he just wants to pick you know a fight you know, just you. with me you know so such things you know just became um it just it just it was just an issue it just became so much and i think because of that he just said you know what let him just give me some space and also if he talks with me you know it will it will turn it will turn into an argument so we'll start arguing and I, I would definitely get him upset. Definitely. So, you know, that, that, that um, let me not, let us not talk so that I don't get so upset. So that you don't get let upset. Her not, uh, let yes. her not read meanings into yes. what I'm saying. Let her not, you know. So that was part of why he would just ignore me. So he would rather just see me and just, you know, ignore me. But it was bad. It was bad. And, you know, this, 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 the, this is really the part that gets me really emotional because you don't, you don't know what you've done 
until you just start seeing. You know, it's easy to say these things now, but if you see them play, play out, out, you will just know that it's a worse place to, to be, be in. Yeah. And that's why yeah. for someone like me, as I wrote this book, I'm like, if people can, don't even get to this place. Whatever you can do to help your marriage so that you don't get to that point whereby to because for you to for me to come, you know, the, me come, to back. come back. I know that the sleepless nights I You said so crying, the crying nights. in the night. I know how much praying I prayed and fasted. The same way I, I prayed and fasted for the for, for the, the weaknesses. <laughs> no, for, for the weaknesses to go. I had to also start doing that to get my husband back. You know, that's one of the things, yes, and thank you for mentioning that, because one of the things you said was, sometimes when you do these things, you expect that saying sorry yes. will just heal the issues. Mm. But then, you don't know, you've sown a seed, so you just think because you come and say, oh, my darling, I'm, I'm sorry, and then the person is just supposed to bounce back like nothing happened. But you've sown a seed mm. that has hurt the person deeply. Mm. And then you think once you say sorry, sorry is the end of the world, but mm. sorry cannot heal the things you've done. Yes, yes, yes. And you know, that's when uh, my husband always tell me, because when I'll say sorry, and it's as if it's taking him time to mm -hmm, come around, to and come I'm around. complaining, I'm like, ah, but, but we're I've believers, said I've said sorry. <laughs> no, you're knowing you're believers. You didn't know you were believers when you were asking. <laughs> So I'm like, hey, we were believers, you know. Ah, why would... And he'll be like, I'm not a, I'm not a light bulb mm -hmm. that you switch on and not switch off. You know, you like, don't just, yeah. you know, do things at will and you just expect me to just be okay. Then the next minute, as I'm trying to, because as if when he's trying to recover from the one I have done... He says, I, I was back to back. You know, it's back to back. I'm doing another one, you know. So... So you're still trying to come out of one, you do another one. When do you give the person the opportunity to breathe? We need to go on a break now, but when we come back, I want to talk about the way forward. Okay. How you came out of this. Because many people are watching, some women are saying, I'm like that. Mm -hmm. Some women are thinking, like you said, that's how my wife is. But there is a way. You've come out of it now. You are a different person entirely. For you to even have written a book, you must be different. You need to share with us the secrets to your transformation. Okay. We'll go on a short break now. We'll be right back. You're welcome back to Chapters. And my guest is still Pastor Eno Jerry. And before we went on the break, you've told us the interesting stories of, you know, the manifestations in your marriage. And I thank you for your openness and your vulnerability. Because like I said at the beginning, these are things that people don't like to talk about or don't like to say that either they are going through or they are by themselves. But after all of that, now I want us to focus on the way forward. What are the things that you did, number one? And how did your husband, you know, in all of this, the role of the spouse is very Important. This went on for seven years. Some people don't survive these things for one, two, three years. Like you said, there are things that cause separation and divorce in marriages. So what were the steps you began to take? And I'll just read a quote. She said, the journey to a better you was a very tough one. You had memories of countless times you cried yourself to sleep. You tried hard to be a better person. You prayed, you fasted, yet you kept making the same mistakes. You couldn't stop yourself from being angry, shouting, and being disrespectful to your husband. So how did the change begin? Well, my change actually started from um, the place of understanding. You know where the Bible says wisdom is the principal thing, get wisdom. You know you're getting, get understanding. Yes. So for me, understanding was where my own change came from because I just discovered that really all these things that I was told that I, you know, all these things I was doing mm. was actually wrong. And um, also, I came to that point where I saw a bigger picture of where God was taking me to, more or less like my purpose in life, what my, my life assignment is. And in order to fulfill whatever it is, whether it's in marriage, you know, having a peaceful home, there are things that you can't do, you know, as in there are, there are um, character flaws that you shouldn't you know, you or have, emotional baggage, yes. that's the word. Emotional, emotional baggage. baggage. The emotional that I shouldn't bag carry, shouldn't into, carry the marriage. into the marriage. So those are the things that I had to, you know, start to let go. So for me, one of the ways that, you know, it was the pray praying. I, I prayed about it, like you, you read. Mm -hmm. I kept praying and asking God to help me. Because the thing is, especially, I don't know, if you're if you've never if you if not if you're not an angry person you wouldn't understand <laughs> what you know anger can do you know because even when a person resolves in the heart that a person doesn't want to do it when you go out it's as if that's the day 
You said it that there's some days that before 12 noon. noon. You are, you've already, you know, all your resolve is, 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 going, is just going to a trash because you just see yourself exhibiting those things that you, you actually prayed and told God that, say, I'm not going to do it today. So practical things were just like, you know, and my husband was very In fact. helpful. I think if people have spouses, whether husbands or Always. wives, like my husband, I think marriages will actually fulfill the heaven on earth. You know, mm. as in if you want a heaven on earth kind of marriage. Because, you know, I stretched him, but he was still there for me. You know, so like I said before, I said he never went out to report me. He didn't go out to talk. He said so. Because my dad didn't know all this. So he my dad was so. going to worry. It was until you wrote the book. The book. That I was like, oh, so, so was something going on? So he never, you mm. know, bad mouthed me or talked about me. But mm. he would tell me, he would always call me and tell me ways to handle anger. He would say, see, if you are angry, don't speak, you know, learn how not to speak in anger. Just, you know, so I said very practical things. Maybe even if someone is saying something and I can't understand, I would, I'll be doing, I'm listening to understand, not to give not a to response. Not to give your own response, response. just finish so, your uh, answer. So just, yeah. And my facial expression, because if, if I'm angry, my face will tell. So I also start monitoring my, you know, you know when you're talking and you know your face is changing now, you just start deliberately <laughs> smiling, even if you don't do so much. You know, so... Initially, it looks as if you're pretending, but it's it's just we had to dealing do that, yes. with you know your emotions. This, these were the things I used to I started doing. And they're very practical things, they were which practical, is what I like because very, there's a place of prayer, like yes. you said, but it's a place of then doing doing, doing very practical, yes, practical things. things. We can't just pray alone. We have to do practical yeah. things. So after you finish praying, then the grace is available. Then also that place of that still small voice. You know, there's a still small voice when you, when when you're angry. That voice speaks to you and tells yeah. you don't say anything. Shut up now. But, but, but most times we know how to silence that voice. This one that is telling us, go, go, yeah. go, yeah. do it, do it, do it, just do it. <laughs> so when you finish doing it, it's that same one that said you do it, do it. I will now start telling you, you see, hey, what, you see what you have done. So, <laughs> so when you get the hang of, you know, I know that, okay, this is what is going on inside. So just being able to control even what goes on inside of you. Mm. So when that voice is saying, keep quiet, and you being able to say, okay, you know what? Let me hold myself, even though it's difficult. And telling that other voice, I'm not going to follow you because you'll still be the same person that will yeah. come, that voice that yeah. still, you know, so that was just just practical things and if you look at the, if you read my book you see a lot of a other lot of even things that I, different you know, steps yes i talked about listening effectively just listen you know even if you don't understand what is being said you just you just you just okay okay let me give me some time to process it you know you don't have to give a response per time then also you know i talked about the place of pride i talked about yes. pride and what i said was that most times and it's it also is it's still it's still linked to anger. Yes. So at times you don't even know it. The, it's important you know where your anger, what what causes you to get the angry. The root cause of the, the root anger. cause of the anger. I talked about that because for different people it will be different things. Yes. But a lot of times it's pride. And why do I say pr um, pr uh, pride? Most times when we get angry, we get angry because we think this person shouldn't talk to me like this. I shouldn't be talked to like this. I shouldn't be treated this way. So it's it's what you think or feel about yourself. Uh, that's what that you, that, that, that you show. Yes. So when you, when you come to that point whereby people can talk to me anyhow, they can treat me anyhow. And you're not trying to be right? Uh, you're yes, not trying you know, to be the one that is correct? Correct. Just, yeah. So anyhow, if you want to talk to me anyhow, let feel, your ego just so calm down. Calm down. So once you get to that point, you see that it's easier for people to do things and you don't get upset. So Fantastic. these were the practical things. Fantastic. Of, yeah. You talked about the role of your spouse, and I think that's also very important for anyone watching. And this is not about just the women, because this can either be the it can be the man in a relationship mm -hmm. that has these issues, mm -hmm. and the woman is the on the receiving end, and it can be the woman like it was you and the man on the receiving end. But what the spouse does is very important. And yeah. you said here that the spouse that you are disappointed in today could become a reference point for change and transformation if you don't give up on the person. Because yes. many times we give up too soon. Yes. And I know that it can be difficult. Like, like you, there was something you said, there's an uncommon frustration that comes with waiting for change, especially when you're not the one who needs to change. Mm. So you're looking at me and wondering, why can't this woman, why can't this man just change? Mm. But the point is, the spouse should just hang in there, yes. and you help know? them through the process. Mm. How did your husband handle some of those times when you then started changing? And, you know, how was he sometimes helping you during the change? Wondering, hmm, is she really changing for real? It was difficult for him because he has seen me 
you know it's like for years you've seen the person doing the same thing yes so even when <laughs> even when <laughs> you know <laughs> even when i'm being very sincere like in my conversation i just want to just talk and not to argue or to make a problem he, he already he, thinks he, that he, he already builds a defense because that's the thing there's just this defense yes. that comes up immediately because he's also trying to protect because himself trying to protect and his emotions himself, yes. yes so he just puts that defense on and i'm like no 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 i, I i've changed and your time is actually very difficult is it to see you <laughs> so so it's it's part of the difficulty as in the, there are things there are places you don't want to get to because how do you now convince a person that you've changed so at times i would really because i because i used to be very strong willed yeah. and I'm very independent as well. There are just too many things. So there are things that if I do, you know, it will just make him know, okay, 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 this is different, this is different. Mm. So at times I could actually even go all the way to like kneel down. You know, I'm just like, you know, because if, if I should kneel, it means it's, even he himself, you know, this is serious matter. Yeah. She, she's not a yeah, kneeling, she's not a kneeling kind, of kind of person. Of person. Uh -huh. so, so there were things I had to now start to do just to make him, and even at times I will cry. As in, just question, please, sincerely. Just I believe just that see, I, this thing we are, this conversation now is not the old me that is talking. Please, just believe me. <laughs> so, you see me begging just so that if person will understand me. He had to start learning to trust me mm, again. again. So that's, that's, that's just, it was just yeah. a journey of trusting me again. And you know, there's something he always used to tell me that during, and that's for any spouse that is going through this. You know, he always would tell me that, you know, that what he started doing was that. For every time I did these things, it, it helped his relationship with God. Hmm. That he just focused his attention on God. So for every time I give it to him, he just goes back. And sincerely, my husband was growing that period. <laughs> oh, and you know, it's as if he was just having a good time. Hmm. Because you know when you're with God, you, things don't even... And you know, he, he just knew how to separate, so separate the emotions. So whatever I'm doing, he'll just find a corner and I'll put, put it. it but he, would just, he was just growing growing and like now people tell him that he's such a patient person there's nothing that can happen that I have been through the fire. And, <laughs> and he tells them he tells them that that god used me to teach, to him, teach patience. him patience so most times as spouses the things we go through it could just be god also teaching us something because at the end of the day there's That's something true. there's something you will learn That's as true. well you come out a better person That's at true. the end of the day so it's not just about even the person that has the problem you too you mm -hmm. you, you also, also go also through go some changes in the process so also see it as a reference a point of change for your life as you, well not just thinking there's something wrong with this, this person. person yes you know because even if it's self control the place of endurance the fruits of the spirit you long you know you uh, long suffering you will now learn these things to love and and really love mm. despite what is going on. So which, whichever way, whoever, whether it's a man or the woman in the relationship, if the, the most important thing is that you're there for the person, you know, you, you keep correcting, but you correct in love. You know, there's a problem too. At times people don't even know how to correct. You, yes. It's not about, you know, some people, their own is just to confront and say, you are wrong, you are wrong, you are wrong. And you're not even telling the person a way out. So for him, he's, he's telling you you are wrong, but he's also telling you this is how you can be better. Yeah. This is what you can do. You know, so and giving you correcting and giving you so, at least solutions. solutions you know, yes. Wow. We could continue this conversation for the next 10 hours, but we would not be able, because like I said, it's one of those hot topics, but it has been truly, thank you for writing the book, for thank being you. open, and for just truly, you've opened a door for men people to just, you know, share their burdens and pour out their hearts. But where can people get copies of the book? It's on um, my website, enojeri.com. Okay. You can get either a soft copy or a hard copy. Okay, there. so it's available, soft copy as soft well. Soft copy as well is available on enojeri.com. Then you can also get it on Amazon US or Amazon Fantastic. UK. Fantastic. So all over the world. So, so yes, it's, it's all everywhere. over the world, yes. And um, then if if one goes to, yes, on my website, you could also see like, like cities like Port Harcourt, Lagos, places that okay. people could pick it up from. Thank you. Thank you so much. Did I mention you came all the way from Uri? Yes, Umaya, actually. So thank you, Umaya. Yeah. Thank it's you for making it's, this. It's, it's further it's down. Further, yeah. For making this sacrifice. Thank you very well, thank much. Thank you for having me. Thank uh, you. Wow. It has been, I'll use the word again, explosive. 
today. But I'm going to read a quote from the book to end. And she says that it is important to realize that if you can tear down your marriage through negative actions, then you should also be able to build up the same marriage through positive actions. Regardless of if you've watched this episode and you're thinking whether you fall on the negative side or you're thinking, oh, the matter has become so bad and so broke, nothing can be fixed again, all of that is a lie. She is a testimony to the fact that change is real and change happens. If you are the one in this situation, please realize that change is key. If you are the spouse at the receiving end, please be patient and help your spouse work through it. Whatever you think that is so depressing today would also be the thing that can be the source of joy yeah. tomorrow. I want to thank you all for watching Chapters today. And remember, it is not just about what you know, but what you do with what you know. Thank you for watching. Until the next episode, God bless you.